This is a story about leadership, uh, about martial arts, about uh, creating change and, and creating uh, inspired, participative, engaged citizens uh, through a leadership training program and creating art in the process. A seed was planted uh, right here in Reno uh, more than 20 years ago by a martial arts instructor who I'd uh, come to uh, meet later on. Uh, where he uh, began implementing a lot of these kind of programs in his martial arts school. And uh, I opened my school about eight years ago and using a lot of Tom Callis' ideas. Leadership was this core word that really pushed a lot of my ideas of what I wanted to do with my martial arts school. In fact, uh, many martial arts schools use the word leadership. Martial arts is the perfect breeding ground for leaders. The things that we teach, you know, the confidence, the discipline, the leadership, the respect, all these, these things, they're, they're leadership skills that kids learn and they take with them for the rest of their lives. And uh, so I, I saw that the, you know, a lot of schools were calling themselves a black belt leadership school, and uh, I knew that we could do more. We wanted to take this idea of leadership and allow them to take what they learn on the mats and apply it to something real out in the world. An interesting idea that we wanted to kind of uh, be able to teach a lot more than just kicking and punching, right? There was a couple of driving questions when we started creating this curriculum. One is, is leadership more like a core subject that must be learned or is it an art or a discipline that must be practiced? And how do we uh, consistently teach uh, authentic leadership skills to kids and adults? And these, these questions uh, you know, came up we had a lot of conversation in developing our curriculum. And uh, in this process, we came across a simple truth. And that is that leadership is the most precious commodity on the planet. It's the most sought after skill on earth. Everybody is looking for real leaders. And in today's world, we need real good leaders more than ever. And this is... Um, uh, you know, this is a powerful thing, right? Uh, we have this uh, most, uh, uh, the most powerful skill on earth that we want to be able to teach, yet it's difficult to teach. And why is it so difficult to teach? Because leadership is more art than science. If I were to give everybody in this room uh, a set of paintbrushes and a, a palette to choose from, and I even taught a couple of techniques like certain brush strokes and color combinations in this, and I tried to really direct the assignment, and I, I gave you each a canvas, and I asked each of you to draw a smiley face on your canvas. Everyone in here would have a very different uh, picture at the end of 30 minutes. In fact, there's not one in here that would be the same. And this is that artistic element, that X factor, that we have to realize is, is part of um, you know, leadership training especially. So we can't teach leadership like we teach math. You, know, the, the, you, can't, uh, you can't understand it by reading a book. If I were to give you a book on basketball, and you got done reading the book, you're not ready for the NBA yet. What else do you have to do? You have to practice. You gotta go put the time in, dribbling the ball, shooting hoops, spending the time learning and developing those skills. Martial arts is the same way, right? We have to put the time in, learning those kicks, learning the techniques, right? Developing those skills. And we realize the direct connection to leadership training. We, we wanna make sure that the kids are developing the skills through real world experiences not just talking about leadership, you know, and having a conversation with them, but through developing um, experiences on the community. We had to actually uh, fly all the way across the country to Alabama to learn this lesson. Uh, our instructor, uh, he brought us all together, and we, we did a, a collective fundraising idea, some crowdfunding, and we came up with about $20,000 uh, to build a home for Miss Georgia. We worked with Pam Dorr and the Hero Organization uh, out there where uh, she lives in rural Alabama. And uh, this was, this was uh, such an incredible experience because we got to go actually uh, get our hands dirty and go witness what life is like out there and the power of being able to take action and do something about it. So we built Miss Georgia a home in a weekend. We're not contractors, we're martial artists. We didn't really know much about it at all. Uh, we, had, uh, we had an organization or group there that kind of led the charge and, and did all the design work, group of architects. But we came out, about uh, 50 of us, and we built a house in a weekend. We've done this for the last 10 years now. And every time we leave Alabama, we always come back with uh, some lessons, some leadership lessons, realizing that, you know, we can make a difference, you know, when we step up and take action. Now, we don't have to fly all the way to Alabama to make this happen. We can happen, uh, uh, make this uh, change in our own communities. 
But this was a powerful example to be able to get us all together to have a conversation and uh, to be able to do some good work. We knew that we wanted to bring this idea back to our schools to teach our students about leadership skills, right? And so each of these, these kids you see in these pictures, uh, and there's hundreds of examples like this, each of the students here uh, are required before they can test for the next belt rank to put together, design, and execute a beautiful and precise project in their community. Now, when a child comes into the school, uh, most cases, they're coming in to learn martial arts. They're coming in because their parents said that they need more focus, right? <laughs> they're not able to uh, you know, hold a conversation for more than 10 seconds. Can you help them out with this? And in, invariably, I always, you know, we, we talk about the confidence and discipline, respect, and all these things, but I tell them uh, our school was built on the premise that we're using the martial arts as a vehicle to teach leadership skills. So absolutely, I will teach your child that. We're going to learn focus. But I want to help you understand that your child is going to learn something far beyond that here at this school. And if you're ready for that, here's what this journey is going to look like. And each of the students, when they do these projects, they are required to involve two or more people puts them in a leadership role, right? They can't just go out and shovel a sidewalk for somebody. They need to get five of their friends together and go out and do something good. The project needs to benefit someone or something in the community in some way, so it can't be, uh, I'm gonna go do a fundraiser for my bike that I really wanted, right? It's gotta be something that is going to make a difference and help somebody. And uh, the project should only take a couple hours of work. It doesn't have to be a big, over-the-top, change-the-world kind of a project. You know, we have three, four, five-year-olds doing projects with parents' help, of course. And uh, we don't want them to have to quit their job in order to fulfill this project that they wanted to do. So small is okay. And uh, they start to build on those experiences. And then each project needs to be uh, documented in their project portfolio. And this was a powerful idea. This, was, this project portfolio is something that these kids are taking with them for the rest of their lives. So when they first come into the school to learn martial arts, they throw that very first sidekick, and it's not very good. But it's a place to start from. And through practice, through training, through developing those skills, then they, they get their blue belt and they start to throw that sidekick and it's a little bit sharper. And then at their black belt test, they come in and you can see their skill has developed over years of practice and training. Now their sidekick is sharp. And their leadership training should do the same thing. So how do we document it? How do we watch this growth, their growth as a leader? Well, their very first project that they do when they first come in as a white belt, it's not very good. But it's a place to start. And we start to see what kind of uh, you know, their, their leadership skills, what kind of art they're able to create and stuff. How, how do they interact? How do they influence other people? And uh, when they start to do this, now their blue belt project's a little bit better and they're able to get a little bit better results. And uh, their black belt projects, now they're involving other businesses, other organizations, 100 other people, and they're really coming together to do some powerful things. See, uh, creating art, art, there's no roadmap for art. It's like leadership, I can't tell you how to, to be a leader, I can't tell you how to influence other people, you have to dig inside and pull out those experiences that you have and be able to use that. So there's no roadmap for leadership. We don't want it to be easy. We want it to be worth it. Um, there's a, a funny story about this. Was uh, We were driving down uh, to uh, Florida Keys uh, with my wife and my family, and uh, we got lost. And my wife says, why don't you use the GPS thing there? And I said, well, it's because there's no roadmap for art, honey. We're creating art, you know? <laughs> she didn't think this was very funny. <laughs> And so these, uh, these projects have become a, a powerful part of our school. Um, in the last eight years, we've, we've completed over 250 projects now in a community of just 4,000 people in northern Wisconsin. And those projects have become a catalyst for projects all around the world. In fact, we have schools in Ireland and the UK and Australia and schools all around the country here, including Reno, that use our project-based leadership training program and this idea. And they're all uh, recorded on a website and that, you know, so everybody can come and see what other kids are doing and things like this. And we're trying to work to inspire other people to take action, to make a difference. Grandmaster Jun Ri was a famous martial arts uh, instructor. And he's, he's had a lot of influence in my training. And, um, and I've never met him. But he said something one time. Uh, he said that uh, if a picture is worth a thousand words, then an action is worth a thousand pictures. 
And so we can talk about leadership. We can talk about you know, becoming a great citizen and, and all these things, but it all comes back to taking powerful actions. And when it comes to working with kids, we can't just talk about it. We've got to do these things, and we have to have them experience these things so that they can take action and learn what action is all about. We want them to become problem solvers, to see a problem, to not just complain about it or tell somebody about it, but to say, I can do something about that, to take action. We want to create remarkable young leaders. And I want to share a story about one of these remarkable young leaders. Now, remember uh, with the canvas that I had you guys all draw a smiley face. If I were to pull out and look at each one, I guarantee that one or two or three or maybe more in this group um, would be remarkable or worthy of making a remark about. And Katie was one of those remarkable young leaders. Uh, Katie, uh, at the end of every class, we always have kids raise their hand. And uh, we, we say, you know, are there any project announcements? And they get to learn how to speak and stand up and give their project announcement of what they're working on. And uh, Katie stands up, and she's real shy, and she says, well, I, I just completed a project. And I said, what would you do? Well, I, last week I raised $3,700 for the children's hospital. I said, wow, how'd you do that? And she started telling me the story. And I need to go back in her story, because Katie, when she was young, five, six years old, um, fought the greatest fight of her life. She, um, she beat cancer. She's a leukemia survivor. And uh, so she spent a lot of time in this children's hospital. And every time she went there, she remembered seeing this toy chest over in the corner, and she got to go pick a toy every time she went there. And it always meant a lot to her. And re- on return visits now after a relapse and that, she, she's got to go back there. Now she has long hair. She's a beautiful young girl. And uh, she noticed that the same toy chest was now barren and uh, needed some help. And she saw that, you know, these kids that were coming in, they didn't have any toys. So she wanted to do something about it. So here's a, uh, somebody who went back into her leadership training and realized that here's a problem. I can take action. I can do something about it. So Katie went out. She raised $3,700. She used that money to go fill 10 shopping carts full of toys. She went through the store with her family and friends and made quite a statement at the, at the store for sure. And... Um, Uh, went in and then delivered all the toys to the children's hospital. She's now a living hero there. They talk about her, and she's done this every year now, last couple of years, and she's going to continue this. Katie's now going out and speaking in the community and and trying to inspire other people to take more action like this. And She could have just said, hey, nurse, there's a problem with the toy chest. There's no no toys. But instead, she just, she didn't tell anybody. She just did it. She took action. That's what we want to create. Remarkable young leaders. This little girl, this is what it's all about. We want the kids, the young kids, to be able to develop powerful experiences through coming up through their training. We want to create future leaders through this idea called project-based leadership training. And uh, we watched uh, this movie, The Lorax, and uh, my wife and I were sitting there watching this, and and we got hit over the head with this quote as we're developing this idea. And uh, the, the quote was simple. As the boy was handed a seed, he was told, though it may seem small, and insignificant. It's not about what it is, it's about what it can become. That's not just a seed any more than you're just a boy. And if each one of these projects are seeds that the kids are planting, I can't wait to see what they're going to become 10, 20 years down the road when they learn how to take remarkable action and become participative, engaged citizens in their community. Thank you.